presenters, you all can. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Bill's going to get the slide deck up for us. So first, we wanted to say welcome to our Montana Five Lever Organizing Workshop, FLOW. And thank you for joining us today on Saturday, middle of the day for you. We are so glad you're here and your participation speaks volumes for your commitment to solving the climate crisis. So next slide for us, Bill. Let's start off by hearing what you wanna get out of today's workshop. Now, if you're new to CCL, you might be looking to learn the basics, a little bit about the policy we support and what we do. If you've been with us for a while as a volunteer, you're probably eager to learn more about opportunities that we have for volunteering. And I know that if you're on this call, you wanna solve the climate crisis as soon as possible. So if any of these resonate with you, then you are in the right Zoom call. I am curious to find out what other things you wanna get out of today's training. So if you could go to the slide, the chat function, which is down at the bottom of the bar uh, along the bottom, you'll see a chat, a little sort of cartoon sign. Good, so I see Mara saying she wants to improve her talking point skills. Awesome, and Laurel says, I'd love to learn, be inspired and connect with other volunteers. Wonderful. What else are people interested in getting out of today? You can put that in the chat. So go ahead and find the chat. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. We're gonna use the chat a bit today, so it's good to find it right now. Same as above, says Hillary. Uh, Mike says, continue my learning of how CCL is organized and connect with other like-minded folks. Mary says, get re-inspired and meet new people. Awesome, these are wonderful. So feel free to add anything else you'd like to the chat about what you'd like to get out of today. Maybe you don't even know. Maybe it's just learn. I'm here for the first time. Oh, Brian says, I believe getting rid of fossil fuels is urgent. Most definitely. You are definitely here in the right place. All right. So let's go to the next slide, Bill. We're going to take a visual tour of Montana of all the states that I've gotten to visit virtually. Montana is certainly one I wish I could be visiting in person. Such a beautiful state land of shining mountains where there's enough place to spread your wings and soar. I hear that's one of your slogans. Next slide, Bill. Each of Montana's 12 Indian tribes is a sovereign nation with its own government, lifeways, traditions, and culture. And we not only honor the ancestral stewards of this land, but celebrate their past, present, and future. Next slide. Montana has large cities and small towns. Next slide. Amazing and beautiful wildlife. Next slide. And cultural events and festivals of all kinds. So Robin and Anne, would you please tell us about the work of CCL volunteers in the beautiful state of Montana? And Bill, next slide. Sure, Ellie. Let's start with our Montana with Montana's congressional delegation. Uh, Senator Tester's staff regularly meets with us and they acknowledge the need for action on this serious threat. They see the need for continued raising of awareness and understanding across the state in groups beyond the typical climate advocates, such as ag, the business community, and rural electric co-ops and local elected fish officials. Senator Tester also cares about households. Um, his, his staff let us know that um, he is concerned about how policies might affect moderate and low income residents, which makes the dividend part of the carbon fee and dividend policy extremely important. Um, so we need to communicate that through the letters we write to our newspapers. And he also thinks investment in R&D is crucial to providing reliable, cost-effective sources of energy. Next slide, please. Senator Daines um, is our, our second senator. He regularly meets with us and we have, or his staff does, and we have enjoyed talking with them. Uh, they have stressed that they like talking with us. And also the senator does not support carbon fee and dividend, but they continue to be glad to keep the conversation going, which is so important. Um, so Senator Daines is going to be a keynote speaker at an upcoming Montana Chamber of 
Commerce Annual Meeting, and we have been reaching out to the U.S. Chambers, um, the Montana Chambers across our state. So we hope that they will uh, mention carbon pricing to him. Um, so Senator Daines does support all of the above energy policy, and um, he recognizes that Montana has a lot to offer in wind and solar energy. Next slide. Uh, Congressman Rosendale um, has recently co-sponsored a bipartisan bill for the country of origin labeling for beef. Um, he also believes that private industry has the will and um, is already developing new green technologies for energy efficiency uh, to lower pollution through innovation without government mandates. And so we met with his chief of staff in the spring. Anne, would you help us celebrate Montana's successes from the past year? Sure, next slide. Uh, sure, Robin, um, we now have a total of 2,719 supporters across the state who have expressed their solidarity with our mission of solving the climate crisis. Next slide. Robin? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> before COVID, volunteers from Montana traveled to DC to lobby on Capitol Hill twice a year. These days, we hold virtual lobby meetings with members of Congress or their staff members. Over the past 12 months, we've had 13 lobby meetings. Next slide. In media, we reach the public with letters to the editor, op-eds, and articles, and we had 250 of those published in the past year. Next slide, please. In the past year, we conducted 34 outreach activities. These included presentations to other organizations, such as to Rotary. Um, we've held some statewide training events, like the event we're holding today. And also, um, we had some fun things. We did a, um, a fun Earth Day online painting event and a fundraiser, Arts for the Climate. Next slide. Thanks to our work, 1,677 calls or emails made it to our congressional delegation in the past year. Next slide. In February, we started a push to engage local leaders in the call for climate action, and we are pleased with the outcome. Next, Next slide. slide. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> As evidenced by all of us on this workshop today and those of us who have gone to DC or joined the virtual and in-person CCL conferences, we are serious about learning more, making connections and expanding our capacity. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, actually you got ahead of us there, Bill, go back one slide. What do we have there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, good. So wonderful, wonderful work with Montana CCL volunteers. Terrific. So we're going to introduce our presentation team today. And first, we'll have Bill Barron, who is your regional coordinator, introduce himself. So next slide. And Bill, if you'll say hi to folks. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Barron. I'm the regional coordinator for the Mountain West. I live in Salt Lake City. I've been involved with CCL since 2010. And uh, it's really uh, a pleasure for me to be involved with all the volunteers across the region. Uh, and these are some of the things I've done over the years, um, starting the chapter in Utah. Um, I've run for federal office a few times as a single issue candidate. And I love the outdoors uh, and especially being on a bicycle. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. All right, next, let's have Robin introduce herself. So next slide there, Bill. Oh, good. Hi. Um, yes. So. Um, today is October 23rd, and it was three years ago today that I joined Citizens Climate Lobby. I live in Whitefish. My family, my husband and two grown daughters moved here um, with me from St. Louis three years ago. So I volunteer a lot. Um, I volunteer with our local symphony and also uh, on our city's Climate Action Plan Steering Committee. But mostly I volunteer with Citizens Climate Lobby. So my husband and I uh, enjoy walking our dogs, hiking the local trails, and taking our electric boat out on Whitefish Lake. 
Nice. Thank you, Robin. All right, next slide, and we'll have Anne introduce herself. Uh, thanks, Ellie. Um, my name's Anne Reddy, and I discovered Citizens Climate Lobby in 2014, and with Ellie's help, I started a chapter of CCL in State College, Pennsylvania. Uh, then in 2015, the love of the outdoors drew my husband and myself to Montana along with our kids. Um, he is a professor at um, Montana State. Uh, and I've had my kids and their significant others um, living with us for the past 18 months due to the COVID crisis. And they just moved out recently. So I now look forward to playing my flute more and once again, helping with CSEL endorsements in addition to my other volunteering, um, which includes um, chairing the Gallatin Valley Earth Day Festival and events. Awesome, thank you, Anne. <clears throat> All right, next slide, I'll introduce myself. I'm Ellie Sparks. I am the Director of Field Development I started the first chapter in Virginia, that was in 2010. So I met Bill as a fellow volunteer. I joined up on staff in 2015. I am a grandmother of a two and a half year old and I'm learning to play the little Irish drum. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Now let's have Robin, if you would introduce the breakout room leaders with the next slide. Sure. Uh, yes, four courageous volunteers have stepped forward with Anne and I to help with the breakout rooms in the second half of our workshop today. Laurel Eastman's home base is in Big Fork. She is a natural leader in all aspects of media, both in print and social media. She is also co-leader of CCL's Outdoor Industry Action Team. Um, Mike Woods is in Missoula and passionate about writing. He co-leads the Montana print media team. Mary Mulcair Jones is also passionate about writing and co-leads the Montana print media team with Mike. She is also a chapter co-leader in Missoula. Kristen is in Bozeman. Over the years, she has led the growth of Montana CCL by starting and nurturing chapters in our state. She is also state co-coordinator and an important player in our lobbying efforts. So I can't overstate how important and amazing these people are to step up into leadership and play a critical role in carrying out this workshop. Um, you guys are all awesome. Next slide, please. Also, I wanted to give a big shout out to our calling team. Their names are all listed there on the screen. Um, you may have heard from one of them inviting you to attend today's workshop. We're very grateful for their efforts. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, well, let's find out where everyone lives. Did we, uh, we kind of started that. Um, so in the, uh, with your name, if you could put in where you are from, that would help us see where everybody's located. Um, do we have anybody who hasn't done that yet? Let's see. So Alex and uh, Clarence, um, so if you hover over your, the picture of your face on the screen, there are two blue buttons and the blue button with the three little dots, if you click on that, you'll get a, an option to rename. So yeah, oh great, Alex is from Bozeman. And do we get, um, oh, I know Sandra, you're from, you're from Helena, right? And uh, Clarence, do you need help changing your name? Let's see. Okay. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So it's nice to meet all of you. We're going to dive into the workshop now. By the time of the very first third coast regional conference in 2013, our Texas volunteers had had regular meetings with their members of Congress for several years. They felt frustrated by the lack of progress. It seemed to them, many of whom were engineers, like a lever was stuck. They decided that if one lever seemed stuck, then they might pull on some other levers to get movement in Texas. Our volunteers reviewed the various activities underway, writing letters to the editor, for example, tabling at community events, 
giving talks to clubs and faith groups, holding monthly chapter meetings, and organize these activities into five categories dubbed the five levers of political will. So using the chat again, please name as many of the five levers as you can. So go to the chat and see if you can guess one or two or all five of the levers. Hint, one of the levers is in our name. Also, you heard Robin and Anne describe some of them. So letter writing is an activity under what broad category might letter writing fall? Let's see, media, yes! <laughs> good job, Hillary, You're very good. So we've got lobbying, it's in our name, media. What are three more levers, lobbying? Yep, Alex, good job, Alex. Lobbying, media. I'll give you a grassroots, good. Grassroots, grass tops, nice. Lobbying, media, grassroots, grass tops, and one more, which actually is what we're doing today. We call it volunteer and group development. Outreach, kind of. Outreach is, falls under grassroots and grass tops. That's an activity we do. We, we like to be aware that training ourselves and, and um, personal development and chapter development. So we call that group development. So we've got lobbying, media, grassroots, grass tops, and group development. And today we are going to consider how these interface with each other and why we need teamwork to get the job done. But before we do that, we're going to look at CCL's origin and touch on the policy we support, carbon pricing, and review what's happening with Congress right now with budget reconciliation. So next slide there, Bill. Our founder, Marshall Saunders, was a businessman who, like all of us, has something in particular that inspired his action on climate. Marshall had devoted three decades to the effort of eradicating poverty. He had devoted his time, talent, and treasure to specific programs designed to help poor people launch small businesses. When Marshall first learned about climate change 15, 16 years ago, he recognized that global warming was already threatening poor people and undermining the efforts that they, he, and so many others had put into helping people rise from poverty. So Marshall decided that if he was serious about solutions to poverty, he needed to become serious about solving the climate crisis as well. Next slide, Bill. As a result, 14 years ago, Marshall started Citizens Climate Lobby with three groups in San Diego. And today we have just under 600 chapters all over the world with 451 in the US and we're covering 89% of US congressional districts. All right, next slide. And I'll pass it to you, Robin, for our values. Sure. Yes, so we've been able to successfully grow over the years thanks to seven core values that we as CCLers share. Next slide. I'm gonna give that to you, Ellie. Oh, focus. Oh. And oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Focus. <laughs> hey, uh, our focus is the single most impactful solution to climate change a national carbon fee. We know it will not solve the problem entirely and appreciate the work that our friends and other groups are doing. To be effective, we do not let ourselves get distracted by work that does not support our purpose. Next slide. Optimism. We believe that people are good and that democracy works. We are confident that our approach will work because we see progress. We stand for a solution not in protest of other solutions. We are a community that offers one another comfort, support, and fun as we work. Next slide. Relationships. We take the most generous approach to other people as possible. Appreciation, gratitude, and respect. We listen, we work to find common values, and we endeavor to understand our own biases. We know that there is a place for protest but our approach is to build consensus. Next slide. Integrity. We are prepared and do our research. We are always on time for meetings. 
Our approach is thoughtful and thorough. We consult experts and use data. We are open to new information. In fact, we solicit opposing opinions. Next slide, personal power. We use our voices to be heard. This simple act transforms us from spectators to engaged citizens, and it reveals the true nature of democracy to us. We are volunteer driven, trusting volunteers to make important decisions and to create and develop things that will be valued by Citizens Climate Lobby. Next slide. Diversity. We empower everyone in exercising their personal and political power, regardless of race, ethnicity, nationality, gender identity, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, religion, ability, or political affiliation. We seek out support and elevate people whose voices may not have been fully heard. Next slide. Nonpartisan. We are open to all who are serious about solving climate change. We do not judge each other based on where we live, what we wear, what we do for a living, or who we voted for in the last election. We work with elected officials and community leaders from across the political spectrum. We believe everyone is a potential ally. Next slide. Yeah, so I would like to say that um, optimism is the core value that I connect with the most. When I first realized that climate change was not being addressed, it made me worry a lot. Um, not that I still don't worry a lot, but I feel much better these days because of how CCL operates with such great optimism. It's contagious and it really makes all of my activities with CCL fun. Next slide. Okay, thanks Robin. Um, I connect with being nonpartisan uh, because at one time I was very active with my local Democratic Party in Pennsylvania. Our town had a campaign to get the voters to approve a referendum to fund a $115 million renovation project for our local high school. The local Republicans and the local Democrats decided to work together closely to get this referendum passed, which it did overwhelmingly. This experience was such a very positive experience and proved to me the value of people working together, regardless of party, to get something meaningful done. So when I discovered CCL later that year, its nonpartisan value resonated with me. Next slide, please. Let's take a minute to share about our own personal values. Bill, would you please pause the recording? Sorry, I, I think I need to move along right now. Oh, thank you, Bill. All right, so let's move along to talk about the policy type we support. And this policy actually encapsulates our core values. CCL is laser focused on putting a price on carbon in the form of a carbon fee and dividend. Scientists and economists tell us that this type of carbon pricing is Congress's best first step towards lowering carbon emissions. Today, we see budget reconciliation as the process that as the best opportunities to secure carbon pricing this year. So let's look at carbon fee and dividend with the next slide. There's a video and it'll start automatically. So the next slide, Bill, there we go. What is a carbon fee and dividend? And how does it help solve climate change? Burning fossil fuels causes carbon pollution, which traps heat and warms our planet to dangerous levels. To stabilize our climate, we need to stop carbon pollution. How? By changing the rules to the game. Right now, carbon pollution is free for everyone. With a carbon fee and dividend, fossil fuel companies pay a fee when they pollute the air. Since most companies like saving money, they'll change their behavior to avoid the carbon fee. They will become more energy efficient or clean up their act with cleaner energy. With this policy, our carbon pollution goes down while green goods and services go mainstream. Costs for some things will go up, but for many purchases, we'll be able to substitute a greener choice. And as businesses move to greener products, they'll provide us with more affordable green options. For example, 
car companies will shift to producing affordable electric cars. And power companies will replace fossil fuels with clean energy. Bill, you just moved your mouse somewhere that made the sound go away. Move your little cursor back somehow. People can spend the monthly cash back however they want to, helping everyone afford the transition to green energy. When we stop burning fossil fuels, our air will be clean, our health will improve, and our climate will stabilize. All we need is a price on carbon with the money given back to the people. Learn how you can support putting a price on carbon at cclusa.org. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So next slide. Um, we're going to walk through the benefits of carbon fee and dividend. So go ahead and click us on the next slide, Bill. There we go. And then skip on to the next slide. So in just five years, carbon fee and dividend will cut emissions by a third, putting us on track to achieving net zero by 2050. Next slide. By making fossil fuels more expensive, businesses will compete to provide the best clean energy solutions. This innovation will reduce carbon pollution quickly and efficiently, leading to plenty of reliable, affordable, clean energy. Next slide. Air pollution has proven to be worse for Americans today than previously understood. By protecting the planet, we are protecting our lives as well because it is fast to implement, the policy will start saving American lives right away. Next slide. Lastly, this policy is affordable and fair because the money collected from the fee is returned to all Americans and we call this a carbon cashback. Next slide. We have a unique opportunity right now to get Congress to put a price on carbon emissions through the budget reconciliation process. Every year, Congress passes a new budget bill through the budget reconciliation process, which provides specific rules to allow the budget bill to be fast-tracked in the Senate. Since the budget bill is centered around federal revenue and spending, any provisions related to the federal budget can be included with approval from the Senate parliamentarian. The reconciliation process begins with a resolution that instructs each committee on how much they are allowed to spend or expected to generate as part of the budget. These instructions don't give much detail and are not binding. So right now, committees in the House and Senate are working on details of what policies they want to be included in the budget to meet their spending goals. This is the window of opportunity for a price on carbon to be included in the budget. We've been working for this moment for years. Right now, we're contacting members of Congress and the president to remind them that the vocal majority of constituents want to see carbon price included. Later today, we'll, um, oh, we're gonna talk a little bit more. This is the second half of the workshop is gonna be on how you can actually help with this and other political will building. So right now, let's open it up for questions. Bill, you can stop sharing the screen and we will, take about seven minutes for questions. So if you have a question, we've covered quite a few things. Uh, please either unmute or wave your hand. I can see all of you or uh, raise your hand electronically or put a question in the chat and Robin and Ann and I will do our best to answer your question. So does anyone have a question? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to try to express this <laughs> briefly and clearly. Um, are, they, are there any specific plans for like, say, workers and in industries that would be affected by this? Um, like, like, say, for example, in theory, as like people working in the coal industry, and as that goes away, are, are there any sort of like contingencies or plans for that aspect? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So uh, we do have a team that has been working on that for a number of years. It's the Coal Country Action Team and several of your Montana cohorts in CCL are members of that Coal Country Action Team. And they've actually 
brought this up with senators. Um, it has actually become something that Senator Whitehouse is it becoming a champion for the idea of allocating some of the money collected from the fee to allocating that to um, to help with a transition, a, what they call a just transition in in fossil fuel. Uh, extraction communities. So yeah, that's that is definitely in the thinking. And it's quite possible it could be in the budget reconciliation. We just have to wait and see what those committees come up with the Senate Finance Committee being the key one here. Um, you might want to join the coal country action team. Kristen, wave your hands there for us. Kristen is an active member of that. So feel free to send her a little chat if you want a little more details on the coal country action team. We'd love to have another Montana in there. All right, what else, what other questions do folks have? Sure, why not? Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how many people I speak for when saying this, but I, there's definitely a concern of mine as to where this fits into an otherwise very busy schedule. So I was just wondering, are there any like time efficient ways to kind of best utilize my actions? Because I want to help. I just, I'm not sure how feasible certain options are for me. Love that question. So um, there, we'll be talking more shortly uh, about the different things you can be doing. But right away, I'll tell you what, when we, right now we're aiming to get about 3,000 more people to, to send an email to the president. This is something when you are, when I'm doing my little doom scrolling on Facebook, I'm an old lady, so I'm a Facebooker. Sorry, I know Facebook's a mess these days, but still, like I see my granddaughter on Facebook, this is why I go. Uh, instead of doom scrolling, I reach out to people now and I say, hey, would you contact the president? Here's the link. So I am like, I am sitting there meditating, sitting on the back porch, taking my break. But instead of looking at people's trips, I'm asking people to contact the president and sharing a link. So I'm doing something that I usually do. And it's actually a lovely shift because social media for me can be such a little downer. So Bill put in the chat right there, the link um, that you could just text to people, whatever way you use, whatever form of social media, you could go through your list of contacts and ask people, um, you could set a little goal for yourself. I hope to get 10, you know, I'll tell you with something like this, if I send it to 20 people, three of them will agree. And these are like sort of acquaintances, not my dearest and nearest friends. So that's a nice way to do that kind of work. And then there are some other easy uh, things to do, like writing a letter to the editor. I found, I find writing a letter to the editor helpful in learning more about the policy and learning more about CCL, because for me, it helps me to be writing something so I'm going to write something and condense it down to, you know, 300 words to submit it to a newspaper, then I'm teaching myself and I'm also getting a product out there, that letter to the editor um, to share about that. So those are, those are kind of two easy entry ways. And Mary put in the chat, the monthly calling campaign. So that's like our president campaign right now, as we want to get it for budget reconciliation. Monthly calling is you volunteer to call once a month, your two senators and your house members, so three calls, CCL will send you a text reminder or an email reminder, give you a little link, you check, you, you do that, those calls, it takes less than five minutes. And again, if you really wanna take it up a notch, you can, I always send it on to my best friend who has never signed up for monthly calling. She's not in the chapter, but I'm like, it's our turn to, right to our members of Congress. I did it. You need to. So yeah. And other kind of social media, you know, there's, there's going to be a, a, a look at media today. So it might be, I just think social media is kind of an easy way to do that and, and also get engaging people. So I hope that was helpful. And if there's one more question, we can do that. Melissa, go ahead. We have one more question. Well, it's not really a question. It's just a comment for people that don't have a lot of time. Um, the Twitter a group that sends usually 10 tweets to people around climate action. Um, if you like to tweet and you're good at it, it takes very little time. And I just wanted to say that one time I did it while my hair was processing at the hairdresser. So you can definitely multitask and um, work for the climate. 
<laughs> awesome. All yeah, right. I'm just going to add, Ellie, um, yeah. if, you, if you do the White House action, Alex, what we recommend is, is doing it, uh, do it yourself. So you off your phone, so you see how it functions. And that way, if you reach out to folks, you can you speak from experience and say, wow, this takes just a couple of minutes to do. And um, having done it yourself, if there's any questions that your friends have, you're able to answer them really easily. Awesome. Thank you. Good. All right. So Bill, if you'll um, share the screen again and get us to that slide where it says monthly meetings, the blue slide, number 62. So uh, I want to say if you have questions, which might come up later, it, it took me a whole year to digest what this carbon fee and dividend business was all about. And um, please reach out to the group leaders who are many of whom are on the call tonight. So Robin, would you say a little bit about that? Unmute. I'm unmuting. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm putting in the chat when our chapters meet um, or who, who the contacts are for our chapters. And so we have um, regular monthly meetings and um, yeah, uh, please reach out to them if you've got to our chapter leaders if you have questions before we meet. Awesome. All right. And now we have a little movement break to get our blood flowing. We've just taken in a lot in our brain. Let's bring it down into our body. Melissa Smith from Great Falls is going to play a little music for us. I want you to turn yourself around. I need to get up. I want everyone standing up. This is a lot to digest. It's a lot to hold in our bodies. This work that we need to do, usually human beings, when we deal with a, with a, a threat, we fight, flight, or freeze. And here we are sitting still and writing things or calling people. Let's get up and shake it all out. And Bill, if you'll unshare the screen, then we can all see each other while we get up and move around. <laughs> There we go. Everyone, everyone up. Everyone up, even if I can't see you. All right. Give us a little music there. Where's our music? screen again, Bill, we got slide 66. We're going to run through the five levers. That is, after all, the name of our workshop. And these are the different activity groupings that we have. We've got our activities grouped in these five levers. We're going to look at how they function together and what you might do in each of these areas of action. What does it mean for Congress? So Rob, let's go to the next slide. And Robin, will you get us started? Sure thing, Ellie. We are going to dig deeper into three of the five levers during our breakout rooms later in this workshop, grass tops, media, and group development. <clears throat> so as we go through the levers right now, think about which one of these three rooms you'd like to join later on. So let's start with lobbying Congress. 
Members of Congress want to know what voters want. They encourage their policy um, staff to meet with us to learn more about local thinking on national policy. They also expect the staff in their local offices to maintain relationships with constituents. Sometimes members of Congress meet directly with us. In fact, the percentage of CCL lobby meetings in which a member of Congress participates increases every year, and that's a good sign they like us. Next slide, please. If you join the lobby team, you and a small group of CCL volunteers will meet virtually with your members of Congress, our Montana members of Congress, and staff throughout the year. You might drop by their local offices wearing a mask to meet their local staff. Uh, policy staff understand policy issues. Local staff understand the personalities of their boss. So having relationships with both um, in both locations will help. In your lobby meeting, if your member of Congress is a Democrat, you will be asking them to support carbon pricing in the budget reconciliation. So that's how we're speaking with Senator Tester's office. If they are a Republican, you will ask them to support the infrastructure bill because of the strong climate components in that bill. You will, ask, you will also ask a lot of open-ended questions and learn what you can uh, and learn what you can about our members of Congress. What the lobby team learns in those meetings can help us customize the political will and activate the levers of media, grassroots, grass tops in ways that are meaningful to our Montana Congress members. Anne, what about media? Yes, thank you, Robin. Next um, slide. Great. A member of Congress cares about what newspapers print and what gets covered on TV and what people on the radio are saying about them. Next slide, please. So on the media team, your media strategy will be to address the political realities of Montana. Since we have large rural areas, you may want to target some of the rural newspapers with your letters to the editor and op-eds. A small team may meet with editorial page editors to seek endorsements of the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. Um, you might pitch a story to a newspaper or a TV station about an interesting chapter member or a local respected leader calling for action on climate change, tying the human interest story back to the bill. And don't forget social media. We use our statewide Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels to leverage our published media successes. Ellie, uh, can you tell us about Grassroots? Sure. Members of Congress understand that every phone call, email, or letter they receive on an issue represents many others with the same concern. Congressional staffers tell us that a steady daily drumbeat of calls and emails make a big impact on their bosses. Part of our goal is to expand our grassroots outreach calls and emails and to get more people to engage with their members of Congress. Next slide. Our grassroots efforts help give voice to those who care about climate. When CCL volunteers set up tables at festivals and events, we get a chance to talk to others about climate change and encourage people to write to their member of Congress right there at the table. Some will sign up on CCL's email list, which could lead them to join. Grassroots volunteers recruit people to call their members of Congress, like we are doing with the budget reconciliation campaign. Our goal uh, one of our goals moving forward is to expand the number of people who reach out to Congress regularly. We can work through our own list of friends, family members, neighbors, coworkers, and others to ask them to commit to budget to the budget reconciliation campaign. So over to you, Robin, and next slide. Sure. So members of Congress consistently tell us that they need to hear from local respected leaders and business owners. Our members of Congress trust these people and turn, them, turn to them for advice and guidance. Individual voices of le local leaders make a disproportionate impact on a member of Congress. That's why we seek their support to encourage our members of Congress to act on climate and to endorse CCL's carbon pricing legislation. Next slide, please. If you join the Grass Tops team, you will work with volunteers doing various tasks, including reaching possible influencers, outreach to those uh, to local leaders, 
meeting with them and building relationships, securing endorsements, and then ultimately nudging those community leaders to speak directly to their members of Congress. You might ask your lobby team for guidance in order to find endorsers who can make the biggest impact. And here in Montana, they might suggest reaching out to farmers or ranchers or the outdoor industry business owners. CCL National's Business Climate Leaders Action Team can give you resources engaging various industry sectors. Next slide, please. Holding all of those levers together, we've got group development, the glue of a CCL chapter. Next slide, please. Being active in our statewide chapter puts you in touch with other like-minded individuals who can support you in your efforts to move climate action forward. Teamwork makes the dream work. Next slide, please. So now that we've run through the five levers, uh, continue thinking about which one of these three levers that you would like to work on later. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we will be focusing on grass tops, media, and group development. Ellie, will you please tell us a little bit more about the work of a chapter? Sure thing, Robin. All right, next slide, Bill. CCL chapters across the country work like a team of draft horses. We all pull in the same direction toward the same goal, taking steps together at the same time. In those steps, we activate the five levers of political will. CCL headquarters are like the teamster who points the team of horses towards it, its goals and gives directions. Members in each chapter bring their own strengths and commit to solving the climate crisis. Let's look at the elements that hold this power team together, monthly speakers, monthly meetings, and monthly actions. So next slide, Bill. On the second Saturday of the month, CCL presents a speaker who talks to us about topics that will help us become better advocates for climate solutions. We hear from policymakers, advocates, scientists, faith leaders, environmental justice leaders, and more. We learn from them, and this strengthens our effort and builds our ability to rise to the occasion. Hundreds of volunteers listen to these call live every month, and many more listen to the recordings. We hope you consider listening to these informative calls. Robin, can you tell us about Montana's chapter meetings with the next slide, Bill? Yes, we in Montana, our chapters do meet each month. Billings meets on the second Wednesday. Um, Boeing, our, Bozeman, Helena, and Missoula meet on the third Monday. And the Flathead Valley meets on the third Thursday. If you aren't already joining us on a monthly meeting, I hope you will going forward. Awesome, thanks. Next slide, Bill. In order to make progress, we've got to work together. So CCL sends out a list of suggested actions each month. This list is short. CCL provides training to help learn how to do what is being asked of us. We jump in willingly, knowing we aren't alone in taking these actions. So next slide, there you go. Bridge building is at the heart of CCL methodology. Eight years ago, people told us there was no way we could get Republicans to sponsor a resolution in Congress that said climate change is real, significantly influenced by humans, and that Congress should do something about it. We chose to see that as a possibility, and we worked with Representative Gibson to introduce the Republican climate resolution. Six Six years ago, people told us there was no way we could get Republicans and Democrats to sit down together, much less form and join a caucus with the word climate in its title. We chose to see that possibility and worked with Representatives Deutsch and Curbelo to create the Climate Solutions Caucus, which at the end of 2018 had 90 members, 45 Republicans and 45 Democrats working together to talk about solutions and address one of the most pressing issues of our time. Even earlier, four years ago, people told us it was impossible to believe that Republicans and Democrats would be willing to co-sponsor and introduce significant carbon pricing legislation together as it hadn't happened in over a decade. And we chose to see that also as a possibility. And we wound up with the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act uh, as a direct result of 10 years of efforts from CCL volunteers uh, working with all members of Congress. So next slide. And Robin, how do we yes. do this? <laughs> so yeah, yes, Ellie. 
So we've explored our values in yours. We've talked about our five levers of political will and how we're using them across our chapters, but how do we inspire Congress to lead? And how do we get people to join us in helping Congress find its way forward on this? How do we have those conversations? Next slide, Bill. So great questions, Robin. People learning how to deeply listen, and that's what we do in CCL, use tools called reflective listening or values-based conversations or motivational interviewing. This is a core uh, tool for CCL. The basic sequence runs something like this. Find the other person's interests, reflect back and confirm what you think they said, identify and confirm their values, find common ground with those values, ask permission to express your thoughts related to those shared values. Now, before we move into the details on valued value-based listening, let's consider what it looks like when someone doesn't feel heard. When I think someone isn't hearing me, I might repeat myself many times over and over, hoping that if I repeat it, the other person will finally hear me. Sometimes I catch myself getting louder and louder as if me shouting at you would make you hear me. Or I sit quietly and say nothing at all. After all, why should I even try if you're not really interested in hearing me? I might even turn on my cell phone, start to play with that, or even walk away. If we want to have our turn to talk to someone ready to listen to us, we can start by deeply listening to them first. So next slide. Let's try taking ourselves through the deeply listening steps. Let's consider a question that we might hear about carbon pricing. For example, what about coal communities? Won't they be negatively impacted as we transition away from fossil fuel? Now in the chat, please share ideas about how to respond. First, we're looking for the other person's interest and we want them that we, we want them to know that we appreciate their question. So in the chat, if you and I were talking and I were to say, well, what about coal communities? Won't they be negatively impacted by this policy you're proposing? What might be the first thing you say to me? Go ahead and put that in the chat. So for example, are you happy? I'm having this, I'm engaging in a conversation with you. You might start off with it, responding like that. Great question, Ellie. Would someone put that in the chat for me? Someone type in there, great question. <laughs> Go ahead and put it in the chat. You're, you guys are gonna be the chat. You're gonna be responding. Great point, Hillary. <laughs> great question. Wow, I'm so glad you're thinking about protecting coal families and households. Awesome, those are great. Fair point. I appreciate you not wanting to leave people behind in this transition. Woo, nice, nice. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank, that's something I worry about too. I love it. Okay, let's go to that next slide. You all are beginning to jump ahead on that. Let's reflect back and confirm what we think we heard them say. And the Alex I saw doing that fair point, I appreciate you not wanting to leave people behind in this transition. What are some other ways we might say something similar to what Alex said? Oh, Laurel also said, I'm so glad you're thinking about protecting whole families and households. So anyone else want to, it's that reflecting back. Sometimes you can say, it sounds like you're talking about, or do I have this right? Are you concerned about, so what might you, anyone else want to share in addition to Alex's and Laurel's, that sort of reflecting and confirming that you, that you and I are on the same page, knowing what I am talking about. Sounds like you're worried that this may have a negative effect for people in our community. You're concerned about people who might be left behind. I hear that you're very concerned about how people were, will be impacted. Yes, so Anne, Anne asks me if, if, I'm, if she's heard me right. Yes, yes, you have heard me right. Thank you, Anne. So let's move to the next slide. All right, you guys are doing great. Okay, so um, using the chat again, this time if you could name the value, and you've done a bit of that already. I'm hearing you express concern for about uh, communities where jobs might be lost. People could be unfairly affected outside of their control. So maybe if you can broaden the concern a little bit. I don't know if we've, we've talked a little bit, people who might be left behind, 
unfairly impacted. I think we've kind of got this covered, this value. Um, caring for others is definitely a value we've got here. And it helps, it sounds like you're a person who cares about other people. That might be another way to say, reflect back to somebody. It sounds like you are someone who cares about others. All right, so we've done that. Let's go to the next slide. Um, we're kind of, this is, we're kind of just making sure uh, common ground. This is where, and you all have done this so nicely already in the chat, where you say, I also care about this. Some of, somebody said that. So anyone who wants to can right now in the chat say, I also care about maybe economic justice. That's kind of a, or a just transition or whatever you might want to call it. I also care about that. Feel free, chime in. Everyone in the chat, tell me that you and I share the same thinking. All right, I'm going to wait. This is a shared concern. Beautiful, Alex. I like that. I also care about vulnerable workers. Nice. I'm worried about families who will be affected. Beautiful. And I love to hear the different, it's nice to have slightly different words describing it. Okay, final step. Uh, next slide. Before we sh start sharing information, I think it helps to ask permission. So this is where we ask a question. We've said, I share, I am also concerned about vulnerable workers. I was happy to learn that the co-sponsors actually address this issue within the mechanisms of carbon pricing. May I share with you how that is working? Are you willing to hear what I have to say about that? That's a nice way to say that. Do you mind if I share some things I found? Beautiful. Anybody else want to? This is the last chance to do that. Asking permission. This is consent. What a beautiful, what a beautiful thing consent is, seeking consent. I have friends who work in coal jobs and want to find ways to ease the transition to clean energy. May I offer a suggestion? Beautiful, beautiful. Would you like to hear about a possible way to address that? I've got some info about that. Would it be okay if I share that with you? Lovely, very nice job. Yay. All right. Give yourselves a round of applause. Facebook, or I mean, uh, Zoom applause. You can wave your hands, whatever you want to do. We've got one more exercise. And after this second exercise, we will be going to the breakout rooms. So um, let's, we've got an exercise to open up some doors to help each of us make a bigger contribution to CCL without a lot of worry or effort. So that question came up earlier in our Q&A. This is a speed writing exercise. So if you can grab a piece of paper and a pen, pencil to write down, you're just gonna write down some brief answers. I'm gonna run through a list of questions. So get a piece, something to write handy for yourself for writing down the answers to these questions. All right, so um, Bill, if you'll go, us, go to a, that next slide, I'm gonna read the question out loud. I'm gonna ask you to write down your answer. I'll give you an example of how I would answer this. What do you really care about that brought you to CCL or climate change? And that is my granddaughter. Before she was born, it was my children. That's what brought me to climate change. And CCL, those values, that optimism was definitely one of those values that brought me to CCL. All right, next slide, next question, Bill. Okay, question two, what is one of your passions outside of CCL? So for me, it is regenerative agriculture. It's also music, art, and poetry. What is one of your passions outside of CCL? Write that down or type it. What is your special skill or expertise? Okay, we are building a team and it's helpful to know what people do well so we can get you into the right position on the field. So do not be shy about this. I love presenting. Hopefully that's coming off as an expertise to you. I also enjoy writing. Um, I like to write poetry, which is kind of fun because it's kind of like writing a letter to the editor. It's short, it's sweet, it's kind of visual, it's sometimes even a little bit poetic. What is your special skill or expertise? Write, you might have more than one, write those down. All right, next question. What other groups do you belong to? So this is so helpful for networking. Uh, for example, I'm a member of the Virginia Association of Biological Farmers. They have an annual meeting. They're often looking for speakers. 
when we're meeting in person, they have tabling opportunities. They have a newsletter. Um, they also do some of their own advocacy. So think about where do you have membership, a civic, faith, neighborhood group, um, an education, a city group, a professional group, either at the local, state, or national level. Think about where you have um, membership. All right, next. How do you like to work? This is wonderful to know and to let your group leader know so that they can put you into the right project. I like all of these. I like to work alone. I like to work with a pair. I like to work with a team. So I'm pretty flexible there. Some people really like one or the other of these. So go ahead and put that down. All right, next questions is going to invite us to look at a checklist. Now, before we go there, I wanna say it's a long checklist. I want you to pick two or three things you like doing and then two or three things you don't like doing. If there's something I don't like doing, I uh, might say yes to doing it and then I avoid doing it. So if you can be honest with yourself about something you don't like to do, then you can let your group leader know and they can pair you up with someone who does like to do that. So let's look at the list on that next slide. These are typical things that we do throughout CCL, that first little column, all, all about communicating. Maybe you like talking to people, strangers or familiar folks. Maybe you like public speaking, presentations or asking a question at a town hall, writing all kinds of opportunities to write to Congress, to the newspaper, social media. That second column is a bit about organizing. Events, you might like to plan an event or you might like to host it or both. We always can use help with designing social media, flyers, organizing, maybe organizing information. When we're doing our grassroots or grass tops work, it helps to have somebody who can organize the data and keep track of who's going to do what. That third column, you might like to do research, related topics online, outreach calling. You can see we had a big calling team to help invite folks. We love it when people uh, help with calling. There's all kinds of social media. And in that last column, maybe you are helpful with Zoom. Maybe someday we get to be in person again. You can do projectors, teaching. Uh, I find that if I wanna learn something well, it helps me to teach it. So you might learn a new skill in CCL and then teach it, or you might learn a piece of information and help to teach it within your chapter. All right, so next slide, Bill. All righty, so thinking about uh, expanding your contribution to your to CCL or maybe even just getting started if you're brand new, look back at your answers regarding your skills and interests, affiliations and circumstances. Think about those five levers we talked about. What is just one way you could expand your contribution to CCL that would delight you and move us forward? So in the chat, complete the sentence, I might. And I'm going to put my answer in the chat. So I might get letters to the editor in uh, my rural newspapers in the big rural district that I live in in Virginia. So what is one way that you might expand? Oh, I've got some. OK, I might. Oh, let's see. I was, that was my answer. Let's see. I'm looking for some other answers. What is one way you might expand your contribution to CCL? That would delight you and move us forward. I might send a letter to the editor this week. Awesome, Mary. That would be perfect. Anybody else have any ideas? Something you might do? I might outreach to members at large in eastern Montana. I might help train new social media volunteers. I might give a presentation. I might like to reach out to local businesses. These are great. Anybody else want to add something? Uh, Alex says, I might want to learn things in order to help others understand them. Do my own video of what I'm involved with with CCL. Oh, I love that. Those are great. I might write a letter to the editor or write a story. Oh, those are great. Beautiful, too. Anybody else want to add anything? And I might like to work with someone to write a letter to the editor. All right, these are perfect. Okay, so we're um, gonna do one more little stretch 
before we get going, just keep, do, keep it to one minute, if you would, for the music. My <laughs> and because when we come back from that we're going to be setting up for our breakout room so while we're doing this bill if you want to set up the next set of breakout rooms and this the, those breakout rooms will be the three levers so let's get up and stretch uh, before we get ready go ahead <laughs> I love it. What was that, Melissa? Oh, that's um, a boogie called um, Old Joe Clark's Boogie. I knew I recognized it. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Old Joe Clark. Old Joe Clark. Welcome back. Thumbs up. We're seeing the thumbs up. That's good. Oh, we're all back. All right, very good. Welcome back, everybody. Good to see you. I hope that was productive. We're going to hear some reports from each of the breakout rooms. And um, I, I neglected to have the breakout room folks give a highlight of what the breakout rooms were going to be before we went to the breakout room. So I apologize for that oversight. Um, the dancing, I just was having so much fun with the dance and I could hardly stand it. So <laughs> let's go media, group development, and then grass tops. So Laura or Mike, would one of you unmute and give us a report on the media breakout? I knew you were gonna do that. I was just about to pick you. Uh, that was, I, 30 minutes goes by so fast. Was that actually 30 minutes? You know, sure they didn't cut that down like 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so much information. We just had a, you know, it was, let's see, it was Laurel, um, um, Hillary, uh, who else was in there? Um, trying to find them. We had a, a Jennifer, a few folks in there, um, and we had a great time talking about um, first, just kind of going over the pro, the the benefits of letters to the editor. That they're great ways to reach directly to our congressionals and educate people around. Um, and then I kind of did a quick run through the we're on CCL site where you can get to go to that community section and. There's just so much information in, the, in there. They spell it all out, make it really easy for you. Um, and then Laurel did a really nice job, you know, just highlighting Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and we didn't do YouTube, but most of the um, social media side of things and just um, how the techniques that she uses to sort of make sure that there's a continuous presence coming in, um, particularly on Twitter, um, but on, on, on across the sites and how those different sites work with each other. Um, yeah, we had a great group. They had some good questions and it went by super fast. Um, we're, we're jazzed up though. It's cool. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, Laurel. And everyone on the media. Wonderful to hear. All right. So group development, Kristen or Mary? We had uh, Chris and Alex in our breakout and we did, uh, we talked about the goal of chapter development as uh, supporting and empowering volunteers. And um, we did a tour of community. And every time I show community to someone, I'm, I'm always like, there is so much information in there, you have no idea. <laughs> so, uh, but just a brief overview and then talked about uh, motivating and uh, trend, uh, the pyramid of engagement a little bit. And they had some good questions and yes, it went by pretty fast. Awesome, great report. Group, group and volunteer development, beautiful. Thank you. And Anne on Chris. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, we had a really fun time. We had uh, Troy, Brian, and Maria, and um, they already have some some great ideas and have some things in the works. I know Troy knows um, someone um, who owns a restaurant and he's already thinking about how he's trying to do a little research first and then go ahead and, and schedule a meeting with them. And, uh, and Brian, he is you know, involved with a lot of other organizations like Recycle Montana. And I know um, the caretakers of the climate committee he works with at Hope Lutheran. Uh, great opportunities for him to bring some more people in and uh, and then uh, decide on who they can approach. And then Maria, she's uh, from Billings. And so uh, she uh, was thinking that she's gonna get together with Robin and, and they've got um, a great idea maybe about um, one of our endorses, which is High Plane Architects in uh, Billings. Brian Hafer's great. And so they're thinking of how to leverage, use him to leverage another endorsement. So. Nice, like that thinking, very good. Yeah, okay, so round of applause for everybody. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so what I'd like to do next is ask Robin to tell us a little bit about follow-up. So lots of you are new. Um, what kind of follow-up do we wanna talk about Robin for after this meeting? Um. Yes, so we will be sending a follow up email with links related to this workshop. Um, and also we'd like to just personally follow up with you in a couple of weeks. Uh, so look for that. I'm going to probably start working on that email early next week. And also we'll have a link to this event recording that you can refer back to. So we will have the contact information for all of our leader lovers in that email and resources. And we hope that you'll join us in uh, taking action. Awesome, thank you. Uh, one thing I wanna do also is hear from you again in the chat, uh, share, us, share with us any take home nuggets, anything maybe from the breakout rooms or from any other part of the workshop that, um, felt meaningful to you, that's kind of like lingering in your mind, sort of something you think you might be chewing over the rest of the day, little take home nuggets. What did you like about the workshop? Um, go ahead and put that in the chat, little nuggets, um, something that you really liked, something that touched you in a particular way. Oh, it was really helpful to be connected to resources to help support letter writing. Awesome. Thanks, Hillary. Laurel, being with amazing CCL volunteers. Nice. Mary, me meeting new people. Wonderful. Brian says, our greatest responsibility is to be good ancestors. Oh, yes. I loved meeting new people. Great optimism. Mike Wood says, good overview of CCL. I like the values piece especially. Good. I also like that. Oh, wonderful. Um, learning more about community resources. Yes, that I always think of that like a um, university library. It's so vast. <laughs> wonderful. I'm going to ask Bill if he would take a picture of us. So if you don't want to be in the picture, just stop your video. I'll do a little screenshot. So maybe we can all wave <laughs> and tell us when you found it. Okay. Awesome. Got it. And then um, Bill has been behind the scenes for this whole time. And I want to ask him to wrap us up. There is a little slide if you want to show that, Bill, slide 111, if you can get to that with the quote um, about Montana. And Bill will, will wrap us up. Um, the, the team who put this on is going to stick around afterwards. But the rest of you are welcome to go after this quote. And thank you. What do you, Bill? Thank you, and thank you, Ellie, for hosting this. I uh, just want to share this, this quote by John Steinbeck. I'm in love with Montana. For other states, I have admiration, respect, recognition, and even some affection. But with Montana, it is love. It is difficult to analyze love when you're in it. So true. Well, thank you, everybody. 
so much for coming and thank you to our breakout room leaders and my co-presenters. Thank you all. Thank you everybody. Thanks thank for you. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming today. Thank, oh, you, thank you, Melissa. You. <laughs> You're welcome to unmute as you go. Okay. Do you want me to stop the recording, Ellie? Or yes, perfect.